So as we read there in, in John, I find it crazy that Thomas got singled out. Right? We, we read the account um, in my own time in Matthew. Jesus was going to Jerusalem on the way oh, sorry. It isn't John. One of the twelve is with is not with the disciples when Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hand, and unless I put my fingers where the nails were in his side, I will not believe. So the disciples before this time had had kind of a leg up on Thomas, didn't they? Because Jesus showed up and he said, Hey, I'm Jesus, look at Look at the nails in my hands. And he showed them without their asking. I find it interesting that Thomas was singled out, and what do we all know Thomas as? Doubting Thomas. Right? They've written songs about it. <laughs> He's known it. He always got a bad rap when he was singled out. And it's probably just because he was sleeping late one day. <laughs> he should have been mo known as Lazy Thomas. Right? <laughs> But he's known as Doubting Thomas, and, and he says, Jesus says, take your hands and put them in, in my hand. Take your fingers and put them in my side. And Thomas realizes what's going on, and he says, my Lord, my God. And then Jesus says something really, really profound. He says, you have seen, you believe because you have seen Blessed are those who believe and yet have not seen. Blessed are those who believe and yet have not seen. Something in Matthew 20, Jesus, uh, he spoke in parables a lot. He spoke in, in I guess we would call them riddles nowadays. He, he spoke very confusing to the masses. But with the disciples, he spoke very clearly. And he said something very distinct to the disciples. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 17, he says, Jesus was going to Jerusalem. On the way, he took the twelve aside and said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death, and will hang him over to the Gentiles to be mocked, flogged, and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. Very specific, very pointed. This is what is going to happen. Jesus said multiple times, I, nobody takes my life, I give on my own accord, because Jesus knew the plan, right? Jesus knew what was going on. And he spoke very clearly to the people who should have believed him the most. And he said, this is what, I'm going to be arrested, I'm going to be crucified, and I'm going to be raised. And when he got arrested, people freaked out. People didn't, the disciples didn't know what was going on. They didn't believe him when he said it was going to happen. Right? They were walking with Jesus for three years. And they saw him perform miracles. They saw him feed thousands of people with fish and bread. I like to fish, and I have not caught a fish big enough to feed thousands of people. <laughs> Jesus fed thousands of people. Jesus did so many things. So you would have thought when the disciples heard him say what was going to happen that they would believe him, right? I, it would be easy. I, I feel like for me, it would have been easy to believe what Jesus was saying considering that anything else he had said prior to that point happened. And it happened in power and miracles and signs and wonders and blessings, right? Everything that Jesus said had happened up until that point. And yet, none of the disciples believed until they saw. And that's incredible to me. Now, in Hebrews 11, it says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and, assur and assurance of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. How many of you guys have ever applied for a new job? Right? I hope that most of us. <laughs> a 
apply, when you go in for a new job, you have an interview, and they tell you you're hired, hopefully, and then they say you're going to do this work, and in a two-week period, a one-month period, whatever it is, you're going to get this amount of money. And so you work leading up to your first paycheck, right? Even though you've not been paid yet, you don't know for sure if it's coming because you've never seen it, but you work and you act as though a paycheck is coming, right? This is faith. This is very simple. The ancients were commended for it, right? In Hebrews 11, it, it lists all of these people of faith. It lists all of the things that they have done. And it says this in 13, verse 13, Hebrews 11. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on this earth. People who say, people who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. Sorry, that just added on my notes extra scripture. <laughs> It's just, they, they did not receive the things promised. They only saw them from a distance and welcomed them. They are talking, this promise, that everything that they were looking for, the paycheck that was supposed to be coming to them, was Jesus dying and resurrecting. These people did not see this. They lived their lives, they acted as though that paycheck was coming. They lived their lives in such a way that they were expecting the Savior to come to them. And they died believing that. And because of their faith, it led to that moment in history when Jesus stepped down and did something miraculous. Right? Because if it was not for our, the founding fathers of our faith, that is, Abraham, Isaac, you know, that is all of these people that set up the coming of Christ years later, we probably couldn't be here today. Does that make sense? Are you catching this? Because faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. This is what they were commended for. And so we find ourselves looking at the Thomas and picking on him a little for doubting. When we can internalize this a little bit, right? What haven't we seen yet? What haven't we experienced? And we're on the back side of the promise. We, Jesus has been dead, <coughs> resurrected, and ascended into heaven. And so we get the privilege of looking back on it, and yet, we still have that doubt. I have doubt all the time. It is something that I have to conquer all the time. A little story. <laughs> I'm going to get a little vulnerable for a second. Seven months ago, my wife, who was pregnant at the time, uh, we have now three kids at the time, too, and my wife's pregnant. We lived in a two-bedroom apartment that was like 750 square feet. I don't know if you guys know math very well. That's not very big. Um, I had made her some promises. I told her, you know what? We're going to be in a house by March. We're going to have a van by March. And I promise you I won't leave the lights on. <laughs> That's what I said to her. True story. And I believe that that's what was going to happen. I believe that God was speaking to me that this was going to happen. Unfortunately, at the time, I was financially a wreck. I was spending money that I didn't have, and I did things really, really dumb. And so God called me into a place where I would trust in Him with my finances. And about three months after that, I realized that I was really being stupid with my money. And I wasn't acting as though what God had said to me was true. I was acting as though I knew better. And so I realized what had happened. I humbled myself before the Lord. I humbled myself before my wife, which is very hard for me to do because I like to be right. And I said, I, those promises that I made you, I can't 
I can't fulfill unless we do things and act the way that God tells us to act. Long story short, I started acting the way that God tells me to act. I started spending my money the way that God tells me to spend my money. I started doing the things that Scripture talks about as wisdom with my finances. <clears throat> and we bought a house and we moved in March 31st. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And it's not because God loves me anymore, it's because I acted as though what God had said to me was true. I had faith in what God had said. And this comes about in many different ways, in many different times in our life, and in many different circumstances, but the reality is, is without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, faith that you cannot see in front of you things that you cannot see in front of you, you don't know how they end. So when you put your faith in God, you're not just blindly, excuse me, you're not just blindly following something, right? Because if you've had a relationship with the Lord for a while, you know that you're putting your faith in something that is substantial, that is tangible, that never fails, that never backs down. Do you understand what I'm saying? And here's the craziest part of all. In Hebrews 11, I'm going to pick up back in verse 36. <clears throat> Some face jeers and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning, they were sawed in two, they were killed by the sword, they went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. Verse 38 says, The world was not worthy of them. The world was not worthy of them. Well, I feel like some of us are going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. But I want to be somebody, when I go before the Lord, and I show him an account of what I've done with my life, that he will look at me and say, the world was not worthy of you. You live by faith in me. You have my faith in what I have done. And because of your great faith, the world was not worthy. So that's kind of the call here. That's the good news tonight. That you can live your lives in such a way that when you meet Jesus on that day, he will look you square in the eye and say, the world is not worthy of you. Because of your faith in me. That's how I want to live my life. That's what I'm streaming for. But the attitude of Paul, not that I haven't gotten there. But one thing's for certain, I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus has called me to And so I challenge you Stand up and take faith. Be the kind of person that does not doubt when you cannot see, but hopes and trusts what Jesus 